In this edition of Audible P News, it's tow or be towed, more Perry Regional debate, and the Pirate Queen premieres in Frankston. Hello, I'm Katie Sharp. Welcome to the latest edition of Audible P News, bringing you stories from across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula. It was a case of the tower becoming the toad this week when police impounded a tow truck in Caram Downs. Officers from Somerville Highway Patrol spotted a less-than-roadworthy truck on Hall Road in the early hours of Tuesday morning. They noticed the truck, which had only one working light, travelling through a roundabout and struggling to slow down. They intercepted the truck and found it had bald tyres, leaking brake fluid and a number of other defects. A 26-year-old man from Clyde who tested positive for drugs was interviewed for disqualified driving and other traffic offences. He also got to watch as his tow truck was towed away and impounded at a cost of over $1,000. Meanwhile, Frankston police are seeking the owner of a large sum of money that was handed in at the station in July. Investigators believe that the owner is an elderly gentleman who misplaced the cash when he was on the Nepean Highway in Frankston. The owner is described as around 80 years old with white hair and glasses. All attempts to identify the gentleman have been unsuccessful, so if you know of anybody who has lost a considerable amount of money, contact Senior Constable Glizik at Frankston Police Station. The Committee for Mornington Peninsula has waded in on the debate around the classification of the region. The issue first arose during lockdown when locals felt the peninsula was hurt by its metro status. The local council is advocating for a peri-regional designation which straddles metro and regional definitions. However, the Committee for Mornington Peninsula's President Shannon Smith told Audible P they are campaigning for a regional status as a peri-regional designation has its own problems. We see that uh, if we went to regional, we would actually fix all of this economic disadvantage and we could retain our green wedge. So at the ultimately, if, if, if the government would just resolve the issue of the economic disadvantage, uh, whichever way we achieve that, um, you, you know, it's a great outcome that we can get to that, part, uh, that point. Um, but we do need to do it sooner than later. And I think that unfortunately the Perry Regional is just putting another few layers in, in going forward and achieving that goal. Mornington Peninsula Libraries now have seed libraries. Library members can borrow up to three seed packets per visit. At the end of the growing season, simply return a portion of the seeds to the library for others to use. This is a great way to get children involved in gardening and for the peninsula to collect quality seeds suitable for our region. The seed libraries are currently available at Hastings, Mornington, Rosebud and Somerville. The fire danger rating system has changed. The system was changed after one of Australia's largest community surveys showed the majority of Australians did not understand the previous ratings. Based on feedback from the survey, the new system uses four levels of moderate, high, extreme and catastrophic and gives clear advice about what actions to take at each level. When no fire danger rating is issued, the arrow will point to a white no rating marker. Daily fire danger ratings can also be found on the CFA website. The XHMAS Otama is on its final journey. The Oberon-class submarine has been positioned around 800 metres north of Crib Point Refinery Jetty in Westernport since the early 2000s. Built in Scotland, the submarine was the last of the class to enter service when commissioned into the Royal Australian Navy in 1978. Otama remained in service until late 2000 and was sold to the Western Port Oberon Association in 2001. In 2021, it began to list significantly and the risk of capsizing or sinking became imminent. An exclusion zone was set up around the submarine while discussions about its future were held, including the popular option of bringing it to shore as a tourist attraction. Parks Victoria has now made the decision to remove the Atama and this week it was placed on a submersible ship to start its long final journey to a scrapyard in Western Australia. And Spark Productions is premiering its brand new full-length story dance work, Gone Your Whale. Gron Uel is the true story of Ireland's pirate queen Grace O'Malley and her fearless quest for survival. Featuring a collaboration of contemporary dance and live orchestra and a playlist featuring an all-women lineup of composers, Gron Uel brings Grace's trailblazing story to life on stage. Tickets are on sale now. After the break, we go to Nicola with this week's weather report. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks, but the fifth biggest retail bank is snapping at their heels. 
It's a bank that's been around for over 160 years, can be found in over 500 locations nationwide, looks after over 1.8 million customers and is regularly voted one of the most trusted brands out of all the thousands of brands in Australia. Who is this fantastic number five? Yep, it's Bendigo Bank. The Better Big Bank. Established in 1988, Progress Science has been servicing the local community for 30 years. Located on the Mornington Peninsula, they are the number one destination for all your signage needs. Specialising in a variety of signage from vehicles to shop fronts, occasional and corporate events, short term, long term and everything in between. If it's signs you need, be it large or small, Progress Signs is the place to call. Available 24-7 at progress-signs.com.au or call the team on 5975 9188. Thinking Signs, think Progress Signs, a station sponsor. It's Nicola here with this week's RPP Weather Weekly Update. Well, the weather has been all over the place in the last few weeks. We certainly have been seeing four seasons in one day. Well, let's look ahead and see if the almost unpredictable weather will be continuing. Today, Sunday, the 18th of September, sees a 90% chance of rain over the peninsula. We can expect a low of 8 and a high of 14. Monday sees the rain backing off, giving us a mostly overcast day. Expect a high of 15 and a low of 7. Tuesday sees the rain weakening further with a high of 18 and a low of 6. Wednesday, the 21st of September, sees the rain intensifying again as we continue to experience the seesaw rain pattern. We should see a low of 9 and a high of 19. Thursday sees the rain weakening again with a top of 17 and a low of 9. Friday sees a 60% chance of rain over the peninsula, bringing us a low of 9 and a high of 17. And finally, Saturday sees an overcast day with another low of 9 and a high of 17. Well, that's all for this week. The news team are having a couple of well-deserved weeks off, so we will see you again early October. Until then, take care. And now to our surf guru, Muzz, with the surf report. Hey, it's Muzz back with this week's Mornington Peninsula surf report. Again, another week of mixed bag we've just had. We've had a couple of days on the beaches, but the swells just died out to next to nothing. It's becoming a stock standard for this this year so we've had a lot of flat days or close enough to flat days and today is one of them but uh, Friday looks like it's going to slowly increase during the day so uh, and the wind looks like it's going to remain northerly right through so uh, there could be waves tomorrow with lunchtime onwards on the beach breaks with a bit of luck uh, then it'll pick up a bit looks like uh, definitely Sunday there's going to be a fairly uh, big jump in the swell so it's going to mean small waves in western port just big closeouts on the beach breaks wind should be pretty favorable by the looks of it looks like it's going to be a north to northwest and it looks like it's going to sit in that pattern right through the whole at this moment the whole of next week or at least until thursday next week and there'll be a moderate swell the whole time there'll be no massive swell but there's going to be reasonable waves the whole way through so uh, you should get small waves in western port waves in flinders i don't think you'll get any on the beach breaks other than a few selected places plus by sort of thursday or thursday um, monday onwards it's probably going to be more west northwest than northerly so uh, but uh, a reasonable week for spring and uh, you know, water still isn't warm, school holidays are coming, so there'll be grommets everywhere, but uh, that's how it is. So uh, hopefully you get in the water and should keep them all happy and uh, everyone will be wet. I'll see you next week. And that's all from our team here at RPP News, serving the community with stories that matter to you. We're taking a couple of weeks break over the holidays and we'll be back to you in October. Bringing you the news from coast to coast across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula, I'm Katie Sharp. See you in the next edition.
Thank you.